It is finally time to stop the continuous cycle of just learning and consuming content and finally getting your feet dirty and getting your hands dirty and jumping into bug bounties and ethical hacking and finding your first valid submission. You can keep on watching content from people like myself, Insider PhD, The Cyber Mentor, John Hammond, Stoke, you name it, all these different YouTube content creators, but it's never going to push you to actually want to do the job if you keep yourself in this cycle of just wanting to consume content. And also goes as far as looking at these learning platforms you can keep on solving every box, every room on try hack me or hack the box. You can drop root on every single one of them. But at the end of the day, this is just a learning cycle that you're going through over and over and over again without actually putting those skill sets into actual work that could eventually lead into making some money or getting a job or whatever your goals are. My goal with this video is to push you to actually want to do the job and stop letting that little voice in your head, your doubts, your your ego, whatever you want to call it, to get in the way of hacking and getting in the way of chasing your dreams and honestly just breaking that cycle of just wanting to learn and consuming content and actually getting to do all the work and going somewhere with it. When I was first hacking in about 2013, 2014, 10 years ago, the content that we had that we could consume was mostly peer-to-peer -peer content that was in the form of a blog post or maybe public disclosed vulnerabilities on HackerOne. But there weren't a lot of these pen tester labs, hack the box, try hack me like platforms that allowed you to learn. You know, obviously we had things like the DVWA, which is a damn vulnerable web app. We had Metasploitable. We had some of these similar or smaller self-hosted scripts, but nobody else was really teaching you the ins and outs of hacking or even web hacking in general. So the way we all learn, and you probably heard this next sentence, was that we were hacking to learn instead of learning how to hack like most people are doing. We were hacking things to learn. So that really included for me personally was to hack on anything that could get my hands on legally, whether it was hacking a VDP, hacking a program like Yahoo or Google back in the day, or simply just finding open source projects and installing them locally on my machine, finding vulnerabilities and reporting it to them in hopes of them wanting to fix it and not let it be exploitable publicly. So those were really our options, but it turned out to work in our favor because people like myself and also a lot of the OG top hackers that you see we all didn't just stick to learning from these platforms and we finally took matters in our hands and started hacking to learn. And obviously with that came earning some money, but the majority of us learned things as we went on. So there was no continuous learning of reading and content. It was just doing and hoping that we'll learn from what we're going to do. And obviously if you do that, you're going to learn more. You're going to build your own methodology. You're going to understand how to approach an app. And it's different than doing a CTF because when you do a CTF or you do these rooms on hack the box or try hack me, you know that there is a solution. But when you're doing a bug bounty hunting or you're doing an engagement, you don't know what you're looking for. So you have to really rely on your skills. And it's just a different type of mentality and thought process in comparison to these CTFs. I know that I've used the gaming analogy a lot of times of saying, hey, hacking is kind of playing video games when you buy a video game. The first thing you want to do is learn the maps, learn how the guns work, what the controls are, whether you're on a controller or you're on mouse and keyboard. But the whole purpose of the first few days or the first few games you play is to learn the ins and outs of the game. And it is no different with bug bounties. You can compare the programs to the maps, the tools to the guns, and just wanting to learn the ins and outs of your target, how they operate. It is very similar and it all takes time and investment. And if you're doing gaming, you should already be used to this mentality and this process. And of course you can watch the walkthroughs and watch these pros play it on Twitch and on YouTube, but none of that really is gonna translate into you actually doing the work and getting better at that game. And that game is again, hacking so you can watch content, but, but I'm gonna say it again for the third time, it's not going to translate into you jumping into bug bounties and finding vulnerabilities. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about what you know and versus kind of what you need to know. And, and honestly, it's kind of sad because every time I see a new vulnerability report or someone just posts their bounty, the first question or the, the most popular question that people ask under these tweets is, hey, can you share the payload? What payload did you use? What is the payload? Can you share the final payload? What tool did you use? And that just shows that a lot of you, a lot of the hackers that are doing that are more concerned about the what rather than the how. They're concerned about what made this vulnerability work versus how did you identify this vulnerability? I think those are the right questions to ask instead of asking for the payload because 
the payload alone isn't going to help you. You can have all these best tools, you can have all these payloads, but if you don't know how to use them and you're just spraying them across bug bounty programs, it's honestly not going to get you far. And and a lot of times you're going to miss a lot of vulnerabilities. So my advice to you is stop spraying payloads, really understand what makes these payloads work, why do they work the way they do, and just learn to approach things with a how mentality versus the what. How did you find it? How did you look for it? How did you come to the conclusion that there is a vulnerability here versus asking what did you do? What payload did you use? So the mentality needs to shift and you really need to change your approach and make sure you replace the question what with how if you want to go far and find your first vulnerability. Now, let's talk about the approach of looking at these bug bounty programs. I've been talking to a lot of top hackers and I just wanted to pick their brains on what made them a better hacker or what shifted their mentality into wanting to become a top hacker. And a lot of times, one of the most common answers that I get is what they do with their approach, which is spending enough time to understand what the product does. So what is this product meant to do? What is it meant to not do? What is it protecting? What is sensitive to it? What functionality does it have? What are some of the things that you may not see at the first glance that are deep in the application? And how do you unlock those? Or as Justin, aka Run Raider calls it, getting intimate with the program. Uh, the first one is one that we talk about on the pod a decent bit. Uh, it's called getting intimate with the application. That's what we've, we've named it. Um, essentially what this meant for me is that when I was starting out as a hacker, I didn't spend as much time with the focus of getting to understand the application rather than hacking the application. So nowadays I spend a lot of time uh, reading the documentation, actually using the product, trying to enumerate all of the features. Think of this as recon, but in uh, for a deep hacker rather than a wide hacker. Um, and this allows you, me to uncover a lot of features that uh, otherwise wouldn't have been found or might be a little bit more hidden. And uh, those features often have bugs and are also less likely to get duplicates. So that was big for me. That was Justin. Shout outs to him. He has an amazing podcast. It's called Critical Thinking with one of my most favorite hackers, Joel, aka Techno Geek. You should go check him out. And my last tip, and I think I've said this a million times, is to go and hack on a Vuln Disclosure Program or a VDP before you move on to a bug bounty program because a lot of the pros aren't looking at the VDPs because it doesn't pay them and it's not really worth their investment. So it's a lot easier for you to hack on them. And you can actually go onto hackerone.com, go to their directory or where they list all the bug bounty programs and sort it by the newest program that's out there and pick one that you like, a company you like, or the scope that you like and hack on it. And if you do that and you find a ton of good vulnerabilities or you find a few crits, and that's going to push you into a hacker one algorithm. And what's going to happen next is they're going to start inviting you to private programs where there are less hackers and less competition, where you can find some valid vulnerabilities and get paid for your work. This next step is something that you hear day in and day out from a lot of the bug bounty hunters is to look at some of the easier vulnerabilities that you understand. So this is your cost of scripting, your CSRF, your IDOR and really focus on those and understand how to look for them before you start adding more vulnerability types into the mix. So if you're good at those three, start looking for them across a bunch of bug bounty programs or vulnerable disclosure programs and start reporting them. And once you get really good at identifying them, then start adding on more vulnerabilities like SSRF, your authorization issues, authentication bypasses, and so on. So really get good at a few vulnerabilities before you start putting more on your plate. All right, I think this is a good place to stop the video. And I really hope this video pushes you to want to look at bug bounties and find your first valid bug. And honestly, if there's one thing that I want you to take away from this is to stop telling yourself that you're going to start tomorrow, start today, stop telling yourself that you're going to eventually get to it. You will never get to it if you don't start today. So I hope that's what you take away from this video. If you haven't already, do all the liking, subscribe, drop a comment, and let me know what you think of this video. And I will see you all in the next week's video. Peace.